Denby is an historic town, but did you know that for a brief period in the Elizabethan age, there was a plan to make it the capital of North Wales? Denby was to be a regional centre fit for the ambitions of one of the most powerful men in the kingdom. He was Robert Dudley, Earl of Leicester, Elizabeth I's chief minister. The Royal Commission is investigating his impact on the town. Not even bad weather can deter children from Hailvre Junior School in Denby from finding out more about their town's past. The children are doing a project on the Earl of Leicester's legacy, which includes the town hall and a massive, if unfinished, church. Who built the town hall here, or the Shire Hall here in Denby? Earl of Leicester. It's the Lord of Leicester, well done. Why would the Earl of Leicester build a town hall in Denby? <coughs> Nobody has another connection, do you remember? Elizabeth I gave him. Elizabeth I gave him. Denby. Denby. He became the Lord of Denby, didn't he? Well done. So Elizabeth I was a good friend of him and gave him the Lordship of Denby because he wanted Denby to be a good town to live in. Had it been completed, Leicester's church would have been the largest built in Britain between the Reformation and the new St Paul's Cathedral in the 17th century. For commission investigators Susan Fielding and Richard Suggett, the scale reveals Leicester's staggering ambition. This is so impressive. How do you imagine it has built? It's enormous, isn't it? It's uh, supposedly almost exactly the same size as St Asaph Cathedral, which leads to the idea that Robert Dudley was supposed to be moving the bishopric from St Asaph to Denby when he was made Baron of Denby and Governor General of North Wales, that he was going to create a, a regional capital that was worthy of his status. And it's a huge um, building project. We have to imagine building. hundreds of masons, hundreds masons toiling away. Um, I mean, pleas were put out by Robert Dudley to all the bishoprics in England yeah. to raise money for this. But obviously it was never finished because he'd become very unpopular in North Wales at that time. He was seen as being very tyrannical, sort of very arrogant by the other yeah. lords within North Wales. A rapacious um, landlord, yeah. And because of that, I think his desire for the building of Denby as his capital had, had rather gone off the boil yeah. and he'd decided to abandon it somewhat. Yeah. Robert Dudley was one of the most powerful men in Tudor England. He was so close to the Queen, there were persistent rumours that they were lovers. In 1563, Elizabeth appointed him to the Lordship of Denby and the Governor Generalship of North Wales, and he wanted to create a regional capital to match his ambitions. An insight into his grand vision for the town is the fine Shire Hall he built, one of the earliest stone town halls in Britain. Well, it was constructed in 1571, and we know that because we've actually got a surviving reef truss, which we've managed to dendrodate as being felled 1571 to 2. And that fits very closely with a letter that we've got written by Robert Dudley to the Bishop of St Asaph, requesting that a, a new shire hall is built in Denby, and that letter is dated 1571 as well. In the letter, Leicester urged the Bishop and others to raise money to pay for the town hall having donated the land himself. The fundraising was clearly successful. It's called a Shire Hall. What's the purpose of a Shire Hall? Why not a town hall? The fact that he's naming it as a, a Shire Hall indicates that right from the beginning it was a, a multifunction building. So on the ground floor you would have had the open market being held, then yeah. the upstairs rooms would have been used uh, for the magistrates' courts, for the grand sessions, for the quarter sessions. Yeah. And possibly right from the beginning as well there may have been a lock-up downstairs. So it's later function when it, in the 19th century when it had a police station added on to the side, maybe a, a reflection of its, its very long-term function as the town lock-up. Research by the Commission has resulted in a new 3D model of the Town Hall as it changed over the centuries. The original design with its columns brought Renaissance ideas to Wales. This building is a far cry from the timber medieval town hall or shire hall. It is. It really is a, a Renaissance building. You're building in stonework and originally almost certainly would have been plastered on the outside. 
to match these beautiful Tuscan columns that you've got forming the arcading. So it's a statement about Leicester's ownership of the Lordship, his interest in the town, but also, I mean, as a stone building, it's a kind of statement about power, because building in stone, the as against building in structure. timber, yeah, it is often about power. Yeah. With all this building activity in the last half of the 16th century, the town must have been heaving with craftsmen. A Tudor property called Brynner Park, just around the corner from the town hall, burnt down in 2002. But the fire may provide new clues as to what was going on. Tom, this is one of the most interesting houses I know. You've had a big fire here, You're doing the restoration work. What's the story here? What have you discovered? We've discovered um, we've got uh, several ranges and this, this particular one, which is on three storeys, which for this part of the world is quite unusual okay, for the yeah. period that we're talking about. And we've got a, a provisional date on the timbers from the front range, which seem to be contemporary with this one, of between 1540 and 1580. And that brings us immediately into Leicester's Denby. Absolutely. This commission drawing shows how Brynner Park may have looked in its Tudor heyday. It's part of the Commission's drive to make as complete a record as possible of this splendid house. Tom is convinced that the building offers pointers to the past. So what are these adaptations? Well, we've got a doorway and a window that's been put no. back... Yeah, we've yeah. put that one back in. This one, there was a small window in here to match up with all the other windows okay. in, in, this, yep. in this room. And they've put this large window so, in, nice groove for the, for the for shutter. The shutter, yeah. yeah, going along there. Yeah. Yep. Now, you have a look at this little fella. This, so with, its, with its mullions, stuck up in the top there. So, Tom, We've, let's get this straight. You've got a window at this level. Window at this level and a little tiny one, up there, one up there for yeah. another floor above. Look, What's the evidence just, of the Well, floor? we've got housing there. We've got this one in here. So, you know, so the rail dropped into there to carry the joists. This is instant flooring. Yeah. On the hoof. Yeah. They're squeezing as yeah. much accommodation in here as they can. Yeah. 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 So you've got chambers here. Yeah. Chambers above. Chambers above. Now, chambers in yeah. there. And you've got a, 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 a sort of a recess taken out of the top of the tie beam to make it a little bit easier yeah, for, to, get from one side, yeah. well, to get from one side yeah. to the other. And you've got a, a doorway through and there. And a doorway through there into, into the other room. Into more accommodation. And is that two tier as well? Three. Three tier? Yeah. So See? that's an awful lot of accommodation. That's an awful lot of accommodation, isn't it?